Hope you're all alright. Got a great little job on today. Got front brake pads on a BMW 216 diesel. Now uh, this one, a little bit strange because the brake warning light hasn't come on and yet the brake pads are grinding. There's a, there's a slight grinding sound from them so we know the pads are down. So yeah, let's strip it down and see what's going on. First things first, we've got to get under the bonnet so we can just check the brake fluid reservoir and make sure we've got enough room in there when we compress the pistons back in the calipers that there's room in the tank for the fluid to go into. Now on this one, it's tucked away right underneath the scuttle at the top there. Now you can just see one of the tanks there as you look through the gap, but to get at it we've got to pull this trim off. Whip that trim off, grab hold of this plastic cover and pull it. Now to my surprise on this one, look, somebody's been in there and forgot to put the filler cap back on the bottle. So this has been driving around with no cap on there, look at that. All the water and damp can get into that, that fluid. So we'll spin that steering around and the jacking point on this has got these big plastic chocks there. They're permanently on the vehicle so you just get your jack underneath those and, uh, and lift the car up. Nice and easy, just get it in the air enough to get the wheel off. And we'll tap those wheel nuts out. 17 millimeter bolts on this and the old gun whips out straight off, no problem at all. Bingo. So we're going to take out the two retaining bolts in the back of the caliper there. These are the two 13 millimeter bolts there with a 17 millimeter spanner that you can just grab hold of that in a nut. Sometimes they come straight out without it, but on this one you just got to just just hold them while you crack the nuts off. I just whizzed them out with the uh, with the ratchet. Now the wear sensor on these is on the other side. It's on the on the near side, on the passenger side. So this one hasn't got any wear sensors on it. It is literally a case. I just compress that piston back slightly with me big grips, just to allow that caliper to come away. Give it a squeeze. Now these are quite a tight piston. You do have to give them a just just put an even pressure on there and just hold the pressure, and the piston will slowly retract. And there we go, whip that caliper off there now. And you can see the pads on this side, they're quite good. Look how thick they are. I mean, they're not that worn. Um, so you've got to go, what's going on then? If it's grinding, we've got an uneven wear on, on one of these brake pads. Well, clean up those where it slides. Clean up the sliders, look, with a screwdriver. Just get rid of the crud and the, and the muck that's on there. Got a bit of copper grease. We'll put that onto the new pad. And when you're putting these back in, you've got to be ever so careful. The little spring clips on the on the end of the brake pads, they're really, really easy to bend. You have to you have to push the back in first, compress the little spring and then and then squeeze them in. And I think that is probably what's caused us problems on this car. The the pad on the other side just hasn't been sliding as free as it should and is uh, and has worn down unevenly. So again, you push it in backwards and then push it sideways or give it a little little tap oh yeah you see that's the clip just give it a little press just to try and get it in little tap they're quite a tight pad they are quite a tight pad but there you go in it pops this is a Bosch system on this car it's Bosch um, calipers and discs there's your sliders check that they're nice and free if they're not you can just pull them out and just put a bit of grease on them and then push them back in again the rubbers just just slide straight over it's really really easy got some nice new bolts these are the Paget pads and you get new bolts with these is there a decent pad um we'll get that nut back in there look i keep calling them nuts and bolts getting them all muddled up there you go so, <laughs> so that's back in again and we can whiz that up nice and tight top and bottom and just tweak that up nicely. Bingo. One side done. Now if your discs are worn, you're gonna to have to take off the caliper retaining bracket there, which is held on with two E18 bolts. You can just take those off, get that caliper retaining bracket away, remove the little nut in the center of the, um, holding the disc on, and uh, that comes away as well. So that's the wheel back on, drop it down. Let's go to the other side. And this is the one with the with the wear sensor on it as well. So let's whip this wheel off and get in there. There it is. There's the little wear sensor. It clips into the brake pad there, goes up, clips onto the, the back of the caliper. And you can just see there, this is the one that's worn down. And all it's done is just caught the edge of that brake disc slightly, just the tiny lip. 
so the disc itself is fine we haven't got to replace that there's the the center it goes up there and into that just behind that trim there not not a problem we should get that out same again so with these two 13 millimeter bolts out of this caliper and uh, so holding it with a 17 mil spanner on that side as well so we'll whiz those out of the way and uh, then we can just compress this back again just give it that squeeze it's a real slow slow squeeze on this one because it is a, a tight piston and then we'll be able to just take that caliper away you've got to be careful with this one because of that wire it just gets in the way and stops you freely moving that caliper about but we'll just ping it off its clip there just pull straight off it's just rubbers and slide the caliper out and there's that brake pad look the outer brake pad there you can see now how worn out it is so that's the sensor just getting in the way we need to just pull that out or just take the whole pad out whichever way it don't really matter because we're going to put a new one on it anyway let's get a screwdriver in them just slide that pad out see that one's absolutely fine hardly worn at all I'll just ping that sensor off it just it just clips in it's got two little spring clips on it it just clips into the center of the brake pad so that's out of the way now don't need to worry about this caliper hanging on the brake hose there it's not very heavy it's not going to hurt it and then we'll get that brake pad out there the warm one and you see it's not it's not overly tight or anything that one it's it's probably just well slightly looser than the other side but look at the wear on that it's just nipped it on the outside but yeah check that disc it is okay we'll clean up again we'll have a good clean up them uh, sliders are nice and loose so we don't need to do anything with them don't need to remove them and grease them again they're absolutely fine i'll we'll just scrape away all this muck and crud give it a good clean because we know that side was sticking so we'll give it a decent clean out just make sure that it's got nothing there that's going to impede his pad moving these are the Paget pads these are the ones we're putting back in got the copper grease again yeah look he's, he's got his copper grease out <laughs> beautiful beautiful now we're just going to get a bit of that and we're only putting it on the on the faces that are touching the caliper just to ease it and help it slide to be fair after a while that's just going to wash off anyway so i mean if you if you've got copper grease fine if you haven't it doesn't matter really at all it makes it makes hardly any difference it's supposed to stop the squealing sometimes but you know you're pretty unlucky if these squeal anyway because the pads are they're really good quality you've got all them nice spring clips and everything so there's not a lot there to um, to, to squeal and make a noise so we're sliding these pads back in again like i said back end in first push the spring and then ping it in just drop it in there again quite tight that's just the nature of the design though it's just how the design is on these with these clips that are pre constantly pressing so they are a stiff uh, a stiff pad but that's in there a little tap line it up make sure it's all good and this is the brake sensor and all it is, it's just a, a contact on a wear pad that once it's clipped into that brake pad and the pad wears down, it just wears through the end of that sensor and touches the disc. So if, you're, if you've got a brake pad warning light on, you have got to replace that sensor because um, you, you, your light won't go out if you don't change it, it'll just stay on. And that just pushes in and just clips in, just like that. Oh, like Tommy Cooper. <laughs> eight millimeter retaining bolt on this inner trim and a little clip you just pull the center out of the screwdriver and then the whole thing comes away you can now lever that inner wheel arch back you haven't got to take the whole wheel arch out you can just lever it back which then reveals the clip and these are just pressed in on plastic clips so you just pull them out pull the clips away and that wire will just come away and then it's a push a push fit connector to, re to relu relieve <laughs> remove that brake wire so squeeze the little tab on the on the connector squeeze the tab there and pull it apart and it just pings apart there you go look easy as that and that's the old one there look out with the old in with the new bit fiddly you've got to feed this through 
after we've squeezed the, squeezed the piston back, again, slow and steady squeeze, just give it a squeeze. It takes a while, but it does go back. It will go back nicely. Here she goes. Beautiful. And we know we've got space in that tank because we checked it earlier, so the fluid can go back up into the into the wet reservoir. That's back far enough now to get it onto the uh, back onto the caliper mounting over the brake pads. Feed that wide down there. Yeah, get uh, slide that back on again. Here we go. There it is, look, so it slips over that new wire, sits in its bracket, and we can pop the bolts back in. Nice and easy that, lovely. Whiz those back up again. Not going to go overly tight on them. Snip them up nice. There we go, that's that sorted. And same with the bottom. There we go, lovely, lovely. Now we can feed this back round again, clip it back into its little mountings. Be careful not to pull it and twist it too much because it is quite a, a fine little wire there. Got that little retainer there that sticks over the nipple. And that one just pushes pushes on. It's quite tight this new one, the rubber's quite tight on it, so it's a good fit, but we don't want it to fall off, so that's a good thing. And then same again, we pull back that trim after we've connected this back up and just clip it back into its mountings. All nice and simple. It's not uh, it's not a difficult job this one. A little bit fiddly, I suppose, because you've got to pull that that clip the, the, the inner wheel lining back a little bit and just mess about with it but it's, it's not a difficult job not at all all in all I would think uh, uh, probably about an hour to, to do the whole thing if you've not got a trolley jack obviously it would be a bit more difficult because you're using the standard jack but it yeah a little bit more tricky but not the end of the world once that's clipped back in again you just push that trim back we put them little pegs back in there clip that one in Back in with the eight millimeter bolt there. You've got to be really careful with this. You cannot go too tight because it will just rip the threads out of that. And there we go. And you can see the mounting bolt on the disc there that you've got to take out if you need to change the discs. That's quite a clear shot of it. And lower it down, wheels back on again. Absolutely beautiful. Pump that pedal up now. Just need to give that a couple of pumps just to push those uh, pads back up again. We'll get that uh, scuttle panel back in again. Now then, obviously I've got to order a, a new cap for this, for the uh, brake fluid reservoir. I'll get that sorted, because we can't leave that open. Um, brake fluid is hygroscopic and it absorbs moisture, so uh, it's got to be sealed up. And we'll get that bonnet back down again. So. Although I didn't change the brake discs on this car, if you were needing to, if you've got to remove the caliper retaining bracket, and that's held on with the two bolts at the back. Usually they're E18s, uh, this is the two bolts on the disc. This is the bolt that you've got to take out the front of the disc. And again, once they're all taken out, you get the disc off and you can put it back together again with some new discs. Very simple, not a difficult job. The bolts can be quite tight, but yeah, not a problem. So we're all done. Um, if that's been of any use to you, if that's you know, if you think I've made a right hash of it, just drop me some comments on there. I'd love you, love your comments. If there's anything you'd have done differently, let me know. Let me know. Drop me a little thumbs up. 
like, subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.